What a delightful gospel episode. Jesus has just finished outlining the expectations of discipleship. If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. The account in Mark says six days later, Jesus took Peter, James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves and he was transfigured before them. Elijah and Moses appear, the embodiment of the whole Old Testament, the law, Moses, the prophets, Elijah. It must have been a sight to behold. And Jesus, aware of the cost of discipleship, was now giving these faithful friends a view and sustenance for their journey. Jesus was essentially saying to those friends, I am the fulfillment of the Old Testament, the law and the prophets, be my disciples. It's easy for us to understand Peter's exuberance. I would have been excited too. The scene that Jesus shared with them was like an anointing for those disciples. He touched them deeply. He laid his hands on them in a powerful way. He gave them a clearer understanding of his purpose. And in so doing, answer their question and ours, what on earth am I here for? I hope your personal reflection and small group study is going great for you and that he is touching you. In Alan Payton's extraordinary novel, Cry the Beloved Country, there is a young man who was born late in his parents' life. The boy leaves his home in the hill country and goes to the city. He never writes or sends any news to his family. Finally, his elderly father decides to go to the city in search of his boy. And unaccustomed to the city life, the father becomes confused and distressed and doesn't know which way to turn. A minister in town hears his story and resolves to help him. The father moves into the minister's home and the minister goes out of his way to try and help the father pick up clues and get on the trail of his boy. When they seem to be making progress, the father, with tears in his eyes, is trying to thank the minister for all he has done. You're a good man, he says. The minister replies, I'm not a good man. I'm a sinful man and a selfish man. But Jesus Christ has laid his hand on me. That's all. May Jesus Christ lay his hands on each of us during this wonderful Lenten season.